Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fairy Talk. My name is Nick. How are you guys doing today? I want to start this one off right away with last week's project, which was my buoy knife I made from a table saw insert. That was actually a gift for my friend's wedding and I finally got around to giving it to him and he seemed to be super happy with it. Uh, and I was telling him about the video, he said he watched it later uh, after I gave it to him and uh, was kind of surprised that it came from uh, a table saw insert. And I had a couple questions on that video in particular and I, so I figured I would uh, address as many of those as I could. First off, was the the uh, the metal uh, and I said this in the video, but I'll I'll reiterate. But was the metal heat treated in any way to keep an edge? No, no, it was not. It it was just mild steel uh, from a table saw insert. I sharpened it so it was nice and sharp, but it was a display piece, just something to look at. You know, and not everyone's going to be, you know, want to use the thing to to go attack zombies or whatever. But uh, no, just a display piece, so I didn't have to heat strengthen it or anything like that. So I didn't bother wasting time on it. Um, also, the string for the handle, people really, in fact, I had it right here, people really seemed to um, like that, uh, that I had a little container of India ink, ran the string through, and that, yeah, it worked out really well. Uh, have I done that before? I've done similar things with um, fabric, um, what do you want to call it, fabric dye? I think that's just what it's called, fabric dye. Um, but years ago, uh, you know, just so that it, does, it, does, it doesn't turn into a huge mess, and that, that worked out really well. And then another co question, and I got a couple emails on, was when I was peening over the tang onto the, uh, the pommel. Why, you know, it was starting to bend over. Why didn't I just lower it into the vise and uh, heat it up from there, and that way, you know, it, it couldn't nudge in the vise and, and get bent over. The reason I, I couldn't do that is because the vise being made of metal, when I went to, you know, if I, if I were to go heat it, the closer you are to that large chunk of metal, it acts as a heat sink. And I, I couldn't necessarily describe the best way what a heat sink is and, and why it's important with like thermal dynamics and thermal transfer in, in different types of metal. So I remembered back, I think it was like sixth or seventh grade, my science teacher did an experiment with a balloon. In fact, this one's, I just blew it up and it's already all dusty. But this is just an air-filled balloon, and then I just have a lighter. In fact, let me, let me zoom in here. So this is a, um, just an air-filled balloon, and if you were to put a lighter or a flame underneath it, what, what could you imagine would happen if, you know... <laughs> of course, you know, a flame is going to pop a balloon. Same balloon, approximate same size, I had filled with just regular lukewarm tap water. So this is, this is an interesting one. I haven't seen this done since about seventh grade, so hopefully everything goes well. But So this is filled with water. So there's a lot more mass to this. There's a lot more uh, material to act as a heat sink, or this flame isn't going to necessarily want to heat the latex of the balloon immediately. Hopefully. So, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put this under here and see what happens. And I am, I have the flame right underneath the balloon. I mean, now my lighter is starting to die, but the flame is just right underneath the balloon. In fact, I just noticed you can see, like, the carbon that wanted to scorch off. And it's not even warm. It's not even warm to the touch. So, let me zoom the camera back out. So what does that say, and what did that have to do with the knife? I don't pretend to be a science teacher by any means. Now I'm way zoomed out. I don't like that. You guys can see how messy my shop is. <laughs> Anyways, I don't claim to be a science teacher or have a degree in any type of, uh, you know, um, thermal dynamics or anything like that, but this was probably the best way to illustrate it to you guys. This has a lot of mass, so when that heat from the flame tries to go in to that mass, that mass is absorbing the heat from the flame and it's distributing it amongst, you know, it's, it's basically getting absorbed into the water. Um, 
and I, I'm sure I'll get some of these terms or the terminology wrong because I know uh, energy cannot be transferred or cannot be destroyed, it can only be transferred. But anyway, so that heat energy is getting transferred into the water and it's not focusing on, of course I dropped the balloon, but the pop balloon, it's not focusing on that thin latex. So that's, uh, yeah, that's probably the best way I can describe the heat sink. So getting back to my point with the knife, if I were to lower the tang inside that vise and when I, and when I put a torch on it, that torch wouldn't want to heat just the little part of the tang. That vise would suck all the heat and in fact, I, I wish that hole wasn't there. That hole was from the, um, like a finger pull on the table saw insert, the original table saw insert. If that was just a straight tang, I probably would have even raised it into the vise a little bit because the further you can get it away from that large mass, the less heat is going to get sucked into that vise and essentially not allow you to peen over the end. Um, and that, so that kind of uh, explains that. Moving on to my next point. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember the video where I did the, um, the pocket hole table and it was kind of a, a test for me and to try and get people into woodworking. And I think I had, you know, I had compared if you, you were, you, yeah, I'm just, just boggling the words up. If you were to use a, um, like a 30 or $40 pocket hole jig and get either a cheap cordless or corded drill from one of the box stores for say 20 or 30 bucks, cause I know you can get them for that price and uh, maybe a clamp, and that's about it. Maybe some glue if you wanted to go that route. Or, but anyways, that would be it. So for under $50, for sure, you can get all the materials to build this end table. So that was basically, if, in case you guys had missed it, that was my video on trying to encourage people to get into woodworking. It doesn't have to be a large budget project. Well, I am pleased to announce and show you guys, one of my viewers, Randy Ham, had actually built uh, that table. He, he sized it a little bit differently to fit his needs, but he had sent me a picture and it just turned out gorgeous. And I, I was just super pleased to see. And I even asked him, if I said, have you been into woodworking long? And it sounded like, no, he was just kind of getting into it. And um, so was able to buy, you know, get the drill in the pocket hole jig and make a nice piece of furniture, which he's going to put in his house. So I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, let's see here. My last point. I didn't have a whole, whole lot to talk about today. My last point. Uh, a couple people mentioned uh, seeing the Nick Ferry decals on all my equipment and in the videos and stuff like that. And uh, what that was all about. Um, partially branding. Uh, is a real small uh, part of it as actually having to do with branding. Because chances are if you're watching me, you already know who I am anyways. But uh, mostly because of video theft and freebooting. And if you guys aren't familiar with the term freebooting, it's basically where somebody uploads the video to a different social media platform and either that social media platform or the person that uploaded it reaps the benefits of any views that it gets. And a lot of times, the majority of the time, they will clip the video in the, in the beginning and in the end, uh, you know, what we call the intro and the outro. And sometimes they'll even take out any type of voiceover. And I know it happened to Izzy Swan, and I know of a lot, and I mean a lot of other woodworkers, that it happens to on a regular basis. And so that's called freebooting, and they edit out anything that has to do with the person that actually created the video, which is just, in my mind's, dis my mind's, my mind is just despicable. We put a lot of time, energy, effort, and money into making these videos. And for people to essentially just steal the video, just plain downright steal it. Because if they were just, you know, claiming, oh, I'm just sharing the video. Well, then why don't you just share the video from the YouTube link? They actually go through and they cut people out. And so that was my attempt. I'm putting the decals on different shots so that, so that essentially there's not much shots left that doesn't have the original creator, myself, my name in it. So it makes it a lot harder for freebooting and video theft. So that's the, uh, the main reason I did that. And um, I, you know, if you guys aren't familiar with freebooting, um, Google it, look it up. It is, um, it, it's terrible. And it, it actually affects uh, a lot, uh, you know, not just woodworking video makers, but um, you know, every sorts of video maker. A lot of these guys are doing this full time, which is, is commendable. And I just, I, I would hate to see something of mine get stolen. And I, and I hear about it on a weekly basis. It's not like, 
um, you know, oh, one video every four months gets, no, it's happening, it's probably happening daily, these websites pop up, or even these other YouTube channels, and they're just blatantly stealing it. So if you ever see anything like that, definitely report it, or let the original creator know. That would definitely help that person out uh, dramatically. Well, that's all I have for you for this week, so until I see you guys next time, take care.